37, verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. All right. Now, the reason I'm, I'm sharing that one with you is because, like I said a second ago, sometimes we think that because we're not towing the line and we're not marching perfectly to the beat that of God's drum, that we are, that we've been kicked to the curb, that God has decided we are not worthy of his time or his efforts. So I just want you to know right now, God is not only mindful of you, he loves you unconditionally. That's the love we as human beings are not used to. So we think we have to be perfect in order to earn God's perfect love. No, you've got his love even when you're at the bottom of his game. You may not have his favor all the time, but you always have his love because he is love. He can help himself. Now, I want you to think about an example. I'm going to share a little story. And then I'm going to paint a picture first. And then I'm going to read a scripture. And I want you to hear this. Now, <laughs> years ago when I was probably about 12 years old, I had walked around the corner to the store, always running errands for Mamacita. On my way back, I had to turn the corner to come down to my street, to my house. And there was a guy standing on the street corner. Now, picture this. Here I am walking, I got a skirt on, and I'm walking, I got my little bag. And all of a sudden, I feel this hand go up under my skirt and try to grab. And I hit it away, and it was a guy. And he fell out laughing, and I'm like, I was so angry, I didn't know what to do. I ran home, ran up both flights of stairs, told my mother and father, we went out on the porch, I pointed down the street where the guy was. Now this was my father's reaction. He went to the hallway, got his jacket off the rack, slapped his cap on, and marched down the stairs in warp speed. And he headed all the way up the street. And we're looking, we can't hear anything because we're too far away, but we, we can see. And my father goes up to that man and he grabs him and he spins him around and the guy turns around and he's all off balance. And my father points up to the house and you could tell he was telling them what he did to me. And the guy took off running. Now, what I say to that is, God is our heavenly father. God will protect you. God will look after you. God cares for you, for your well-being, for your frame of mind, for your emotional condition. He cares for all of that. He's not just watching checking that list like they talk about Santa Claus, checking it twice, seeing if we're naughty or nice. No, God is checking us out internally. He wants to be totally in tune. He is totally in tune with what makes us tick, what brings us down, what builds us up, what means something to us. He cares about that, even when other people think we're being silly or immature. I want you to know this because God is very, very mindful of us more than you realize. Now, in the book of Psalms uh, 42, I want you to hear this because God is letting you know. I don't know who this is for. I really don't. But last night while I was praying over these scriptures that God gave me, I started crying. I, I had to fight it. I said, Lord, who is this for? 
I don't know who you are, but somebody, one, maybe more of you, are going through something where you really feel like you're losing your ground. And this is what God says to you. He is reflecting your heart's cry to him. This is Psalms 42. Let me look at the verse. All right, verse 6, verse 5. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites from the hill Mizar. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night, his song shall be with me and my prayer unto God, the God of my life. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? That's the way we feel. Why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning? Because of the oppression of the enemy. Mm, okay, I'm going to stop there. I'm reading a lot of scripture today. What I want you to know, God gives those scriptures to let us know that he knows how we feel. I can't tell you how many times I had to run to God with my face soaked with tears. And I would sit down and get ready to talk to him. And he thr thrust the scripture in my head. And I would turn to the chapter and the number, the, the book and the number of the chapter that he put in my head. And I start reading and it's saying what I'm feeling. God knows what you're going through. You cannot give up on God because he will not give up on you as long as you keep trying. Now listen. Mm, mm, mm. Psalms 18, verses 2 through 7, and verses 16 through 32. Sometimes we need to get a lot of word in us. And then I'm going to sing a song, a cappella, because that was given to me as well. I hadn't thought of this song. I haven't sung this song in about 10 years maybe longer, but just to show you how much God wants you to know he's for you, not against you. Verse two, this is chapter 18. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, my high tower, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The sorrows of death compassed me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundation also of the hills moved and was shaken, because he was wroth. Now, let me stop there. Remember the picture I painted of my father rushing down the stairs to ring that guy out for messing with his baby girl? I don't know what he told him. I didn't even ask. My mother was afraid he was going to be arrested for murder at that moment because he was seething. When you have a father that protects you, they are angry at anybody who molests you. They're angry at anybody who bothers you, who oppresses you. They go after them with a vengeance. Well, that's what God is painting a picture of right here. 
He, he comes down to meet your need with a vengeance. He's coming to your rescue. You may not feel his presence. You may not be aware of his concern. But he's moving on your behalf. Whether you can see his hand or whether you can't, he's moving. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. He sent from above. He took me. Woo! I'm feeling this, you guys. Woo! He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. And I know some of you feel like the oppressing that's going on is too strong for you. Mm. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Let me, I got two things going on in my head right now. Listen, years ago, when I got caught up in sexual sin, I did for a minute. Yeah, I admit it. But I was walking with the Lord, but I stumbled over my own two feet. And God ministered to me and showed me that I was not bent on sin through the scripture. He showed me that I was poor and needy through other scriptures. The central vein of all the other scriptures he kept showing me was poor and needy. And I was fighting not to get offended because I thought of needy as, what? Needy? But God showed me that from going through eight years of an adulterous marriage of a husband that preferred prostitutes over his own wife. It really did a job on my self-esteem as a woman, not as a person, as a woman. And my sexuality was in question. Am I desirable? Does anybody want me? Am I all, am, am I all that in a bag of chips or am I chopped liver? What's up with this? God knew I was going through a lot of self-doubt. Now, what I'm trying to share with you is that God understands why you have the can't help it. He understands why you are emotionally a wreck. Sometimes you're a train wreck. Sometimes you're an out and out crash. He understands why. And he wants you to understand it. So if you remember to go to him, he will open your eyes and you will see what you've never seen before. And he will help you understand your uprising, your down sitting, your weaknesses, your strength. He'll help you understand yourself. And he'll work on you. The potter wants to put you back together again. He's not going to leave you the way you are. He's not going to say, oh, you too messed up. I can't be bothered. I got bigger fish to fry up in here. No, that's not the God you serve. The best place to be messed up, the best place to be a jacked up ball of mess is in the palm of God's loving hand because he will handle you with tender, loving care. And some of you need so much healing that if you're not patient with yourself, there's a danger of you giving up on God thinking he's not taking care of you because you're not seeing results fast enough. Well, God never put a time clock on your results. So you need to take that time clock off and throw it in the trash. Sometimes we think 
Oh my goodness. Sometimes we think we're a lost cause. When we think of our beginnings, when we think of where we came from, of how how people messed our lives, our minds up, our emotions up, our bodies up. We, we think about all that. But God understands where that came from. And it delights God. It, he is tickled pink when you come to him with your mess. When was the last time you sat down before God, cried your eyes out and said, God, I need help. Something's wrong with me. Something's wrong with my mind. Something's wrong with my heart. I'm twisted up in knots inside. I don't know how to navigate through this thing. I don't want to lose out on you, but God, I feel like I'm lost in myself. That's right where God wants you to be. Now you're humbling yourself. Now you're bearing your soul. The Bible says, pour your heart out to him. You don't just tell him the good stuff. He knows stuff about you. You don't even know about yourself. You haven't even discovered yet because he has kept your eyes closed. You're not ready to deal with some of the stuff that's still in there. He knows it. But when he's ready to deal, he'll deal with it when you're ready. He is all about rebuilding. Why do you think Jesus was came to this earth learning the art of carpentry? Why? Because he rebuilds, he refurbishes, he reconstructs, he creates, he recreates. Okay, let me go with this song. There's a thought I've lost and I'm waiting for God to bring it back. Now, I don't have a company, man, because it'll sound horrible. And I'm not trying to sing a solo. I want you to hear the message of the song. Since I came from the hospital two years ago, it ain't the same. So just listen to the words, please. Smile. Make them think you're happy. Lie. Say that things are fine and hide that empty longing that you feel. Don't ever show it. Just keep your heart concealed. Why are the days so lonely? I wonder where, where can a heart go free? And who will dry the tears that no one sees? There must be someone to share your silent dreams. Caught like a leaf in the wind, Looking for a friend, where do you turn? Oh, whisper the words of a prayer, and you'll find them there, arms open wide, love in his eyes. Jesus, he meets you where you are. Oh, 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 Jesus, he heals your secret scars. And all the love you're longing for is Jesus, the friend of a wounded heart. Joy comes like the morning. And hope deepens as you grow. And peace 
beyond the reaches of your soul comes flowing through you for love has made you whole once like a leaf in the wind i looked for a friend where did i turn i whispered the words of a prayer and i found them there arms open wide Love in his eyes. Oh, Jesus, he meets you where you are. Oh, Jesus, he heals your secret scars. And all the love you're longing for is Jesus the friend of a wounded heart. God is your friend. God is your paraclete. God is, he's got your back. He's running ahead of you, preparing the way in front of you. He's protecting you. He is there to heal your heart, your mind, your soul, your body, your spirit. God is ever mindful of you. Whether you believe it or not, whether you've had parents that made sense or not, God is your father. God is very, he is a very present help in times of trouble. When you're in need, he is a very, very present help. Don't you ever forget that. I know it's easy to when things go rotten and things go bump in the night and life seems to kick you in the teeth and you just don't know what you're going to do. But he says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. You are not alone in this thing. This is not a fight you have to do solo. He, oh my goodness, I wish I could show you Okay, thank you. Let me let me share this. I may have told this recently, but I got to tell it again. Years ago, when I was hanging out in the streets in the nightclub, and I could only use my father as an example, because of the phenomenal job he did, and because he was such a phenomenal father, it made it easy for me to connect with God because my trust level was already there. Now, if God had represented my mother, that would have been a different ball game. It would have taken me a lot longer. But because God represents more of a father, it made it easy for me. Now, when I was out in the nightclub, I was unsaved. I didn't get saved till I was 27 and I was not raised in church. So I was a heathen. Yeah, cuss like a sailor and all that nonsense. Anyway, so here I was, been out all night, hanging, partying, acting a fool. And somebody brings me back to my car because my car was on a flat. I get to the back where my car is and one of the guys that was still at the club, he says, Pat, do you know an old man with a falcon? And I said, yeah. I said, that's my father. He said, well, he just, he said, look at your car. He just changed your flat. He went, he took the old flat off. He asked me if I'd seen you, how you were doing, because he was concerned. Then he went and bought a new tire and came back and got on the ground and, and put the new tire on your car. And he left. Now, that may not say much to you. But at that time, I was in a psychological funk. And in my mind, I didn't want to be bothered with him, my mother. I was ungrateful. I was full of myself, selfish, self-pity, the whole nine yards. And I was like between 19 and 20 at the time. When he said that to me, 
That was the first time being unsaved that I saw myself in a way I had never seen myself before. And I compared me to my father. My father showed me unconditional love, you guys. He wasn't there waiting for me so that we could talk. He changed my tire. He saw a need. He met my need. And he went his way, never hearing a thank you. Never getting to see my face. But he cared enough knowing I might not even appreciate it. He did it anyway. That's how much he loved me. And I felt like a roach. It was like I finally started to see how much this man loved me. Now, many of you have had issues in your past, so you don't really have much to compare God to. I understand it, and I'm human. Imagine how much more God understands that. Most of us were not born with a silver spoon in our mouth. And we weren't born under ideal circumstances, ideal laboratory conditions. We weren't born under those conditions. Most of our families were dysfunctional in one way or another. But that right there, is why many of you are dysfunctional. Why many of you are still trying to get your head screwed on straight. Because there is so much damage that has been done. Some of you have been molested, male and female. Some of you have been abandoned. Some of you have been raped. Some of you have been <laughs> totally rejected. Don't you think God understands that? Boy, you know, sometimes I wish I could just bring a silver platter and say, here, let me present God to you. Let me show you how beautiful he really is. Let me reveal to you his magnanimous heart, his love, his Oh my goodness, if you could just see it, if you could just feel it. Help me, Lord. Help me to get this straight. Because I felt when I was getting ready for this message that many of you are disheartened with yourselves. And many of you are having a hard time sticking to it. You're having a hard time because you have had so many lies and so many disappointments and broken promises. So many deficits in your life. It's hard for you to believe that of these people that gave birth to you, that took care of you, don't think you're worthy of their best. Why would God... Because you don't understand God's love. You don't understand how it breaks his heart that your heart is so broken. Father, I ask you right now, Lord, lead and guide me. Help me to hear this. In the name of Jesus, help me to hear what you're saying and relay what you're saying so that everybody can understand, Father. Because it's hard to describe color to a person who was born blind. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Okay. When my mother gave birth to me, I'm gonna give you an example. When my mother gave birth to me, 
She was in the, uh, about two years afterwards, she, two or three years after, she had a nervous breakdown. And she went into an insane asylum where they committed her. She didn't go, they took her. Now, what I want to share with you is when she came out, she hadn't totally recovered. And all of the poison from her being abused as a child, physically and emotionally, all of those scars started spewing out. And I was the youngest in the household. Of course, the most defenseless. So she took everything out on me. Bad. Bad. If it hadn't been for you. Bad. I mean, her nickname for me when she was angry was B-I-T-C-H. You little, you little, you. I mean, she just would. And I had to sit there. I couldn't talk back. Those weren't the days when we talked back, y'all. So I had to sit there and take it. And it was steadily being shoved at me, shoved at me. All the negative words. You know, you're borderline retarded. You know, you're this, you know, you're that. I mean, oh my goodness. She was so negative that by the time I had I had stayed with my godparents, I'm just sharing this with you so you understand what I'm talking about. I had stayed with my godparents for over a year. And I remember being a kid, I never studied until we all moved into the house together after my mother and father got married for the sake of the child. Then after all the poison started coming at me, before I knew it, I was stuttering like a retard. I was literally stuttering. I could barely get a word out. And don't put me in front of the class where the kids made fun of me too. It was rejection on top of rejection, on top of ridicule, on top of insults, on top of put downs, on, oh my goodness. And I had to deal with all that. Now, what I'm trying to say to you is that stuff follows you all your life if you don't turn it over to God. I was 26 years old, still crying about stuff that was said to me when I was four, five, and six. It hurt just as much at 26 as it did when it happened when I was six. God wants to heal all of that, you guys. Now, this may not be what you call a typical little sermon, but I'm not trying to preach. I'm trying to get something across to you. God wants to heal all of that. You do not have to go through your life blind, crippled, and crazy. God will straighten up your walk. He will screw your head on straight, and he'll open your eyes to all kind of possibilities, to all the beauty he put inside of you and to his love for you. So you don't have to go through life leaning on broken bones, leaning on psychological damage, leaning on a weak heart, leaning on crazy emotions that don't know where they want to be. Lean on God. Lean on the everlasting arms of God. God will never grow tired of you. You may be tired of yourself. You may be disgusted with your lack of progress. But God is not because God knows how long it will take you to heal. But you have to keep plugging at it. You have to pursue your healing. And understand that it is your right. That's part of your inheritance as a child of the Most High King. And once the healing begins, your behavioral patterns will change. Mm. <laughs> I wish I could get some of this across to you. 
Wow. Hang on. I wrote something last night. I want to see what I wrote. Thank you. I'm going to end with this. Thank you, Lord. I forgot. And she, just a chorus. And Jesus said, come to the water, stand by my side. I know you are thirsty. You won't be denied. I felt every tear drop when in darkness you cried. And I strove to remind you that for those tears I died. Come to the water. Ask God for healing. We're going to have an online altar call right now. And I want those of you who want prayer to let me know. I'm going to open up the mics. It's time for prayer and deliverance, you guys. It is time out for being beaten down by the enemy. Don't repeat the enemy's lies about you. What you're doing is giving more power to him than the power of God in your own mind. He'll never be more powerful than God. But in your mind, you cannot reach any further than you can believe. You know, oh Lord, I'm trying to stop. I really am. In the Old Testament where God told Abraham, he said, as far as as your eyes can see, that have I given you. As far as your eyes can see, that has God given you. How far can you see? Or are you stuck with looking in the mirror at yourself? And the closer that mirror gets and the bigger your image gets and the bigger the problem looks, the fur, the harder it is to see beyond that point. You cannot see, you cannot believe, you cannot reach further than you can see. When you get it in your nugget that it is your right to be free, it is your right to be healed, it is your right to be delivered and loved. you will be, be able to see further. Right now, you're too nearsighted. Ask God to open up your eyes and show you what he has going for you. All right, I'm going to open up the mics. God bless you.